Hey, this is Troy from Planet 76. We've got some really good Sixers focused content coming your way today. Make sure you subscribe to the pod so you can be in the know when we release new content. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everyone, to another rendition of Planet 76 from the couch. My name is Michael. Troy is actually not here with me tonight. It's just going to be me recording a solo episode. Troy and I do this from time to time when both of us have something to do or one of us, you know, wasn't around, couldn't quite watch the game. We're going to get into one of those again tonight. It's going to be a short one. However, I'm going to be taking you through some recent Sixers action. More specifically and more importantly, tonight's loss against the Clippers. Make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Instagram. We're going to be wrapping things up soon. We have some things in the works that we're actively pursuing. So stay tuned for that. Some exciting things in our kind of network area, whatever you, our world, whatever you want to call it. But let's get right into the episode. Sixers fall tonight, 108-107 to the Clippers. A game that you really thought they were going to win. If you ended up catching the game tonight, you really thought they were going to win it. But they didn't. They lost after a last-second attempt from Kelly Oubre that, unfortunately, he was not able to get off in time. He still missed, but it wouldn't have mattered if he made it because he did not get the shot off in time. Anyway, however, Kelly Oubre played super well. He had a double-double. Tyrese Maxey played super well. Buddy Heald had 15 points off the bench tonight. Nick Batum played super well tonight. A game against a team that is clearly superior to you, but you still are in the game the whole time. You are still in it, and you almost won. The Sixers had the lead multiple times. Something that hasn't happened much since Embiid went down, especially against a caliber of team in the Los Angeles Clippers like we're talking about right now. They did play the Clippers in L.A. a few nights ago, which I always thought is weird. Why did they go out to L.A., play the Clippers, and the Clippers come here? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Sixers lost to the Kings. Two nights ago on Monday night, they had a back-to-back. Clippers, Kings in Sacramento. They came home for their first home game. And their first home game in a while, in a week, week and a half at this point. They were in, or they were on the West Coast. They played Phoenix. They played LA. Both LA teams, actually. Then Sacramento. Then they came home. They're playing the Clippers now. And they lost. So, again, not a whole lot to really talk about. Tyrese Maxey has looked good since he's returned. Obviously, Tyrese Maxey isn't going to look amazing for a lot of reasons. One being that he's now in a position where he's the guy on the Sixers. Joel Embiid's out. He steps in as the number one, if you will, the guy. He is now taking a lot of what Joel Embiid did, the responsibilities that Joel Embiid had, and defenses of other teams are treating him as the guy because he is now the guy. So he's dealing with extra coverages. He's dealing with tougher defensive matchups. The game has been a bit harder for him, not only because he isn't really used to that for extended periods of time, but also just because it's a lot. No matter who it is, even if it's Joel Embiid, it's a lot. Now he makes it look really easy, yes, but... It's a lot for anybody. So Tyrese Maxey hasn't looked amazing. He's looked good. He's had some really fantastic performances. Tonight, Tyrese Maxey was awesome. He had 26 points. He had a couple threes and just played super well. Hit some really big shots for the Sixers, but just played super well. I do want to give a shout out to Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald was great. I am really shocked at how well Buddy Heald plays off the dribble. I like the way he attacks closeouts. I like the way he kind of attacks defenses, catches them off guard. I really like his slashing ability. I did not know he was legitimately good slash decent at attacking the basket, especially off closeouts. That's a perk, huge perk to have, especially when Embiid comes back. Now, they're not going to have a whole lot of time to play together in the regular season, if at all. I don't know. It's it's something that is going to be really interesting to see. And it's something that the Sixers are just going to have to roll with. Joel Embiid reportedly is going to be coming back the first or second week of April. That would put us at the end of next week. April begins next week. Easter is on Sunday. Happy Easter to those who celebrate. Um, 
Easter's on Sunday, then April 1st is Monday. We're looking at eh, the best case scenario. The best case scenario would be end of next week. That puts us at around April 6th or 7th. We're looking at one week left of the regular season. For the Sixers to get Embiid back and have him semi-adjust to him returning. Slash him back on the team. Now it's not going to be too difficult because he is just going to get every responsibility back that he had before. And guys are going to have to kind of adjust around him. It shouldn't be too difficult though. Especially because Batum, Oubre, Covington have been here already. They were already here playing. Um, Heald is going to be a seamless fit alongside Embiid as well. Mostly because of his shooting ability, catching and shooting, coming off screens from Embiid specifically. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, but we have to get there first. And we're not there yet. I don't want to look too far in the future. We have to get there still. Sixers have about 39 and 34. Just doing some quick math here. That's 74 games. Is that right? 73 games? Let's just say 10 games. Sixers have about 10 games left. It's about two weeks of the season. This is it. This is it. They're the 8th seed. They're 39-34 and 34 right now. That's right. Yeah, 73 games. So they have nine games left. That might not be right. I should have checked, but I didn't. Let's just say 10. Let's just say 10. 10 games of the season left. Things are really coming down to the wire again. Just a quick little recap episode for you guys. Don't want to hold you too much. Tonight, enjoy the evening. Still go Sixers. It's still, we need a bead back. <laughs> but still go Sixers. And Troy and I are going to be back very soon with a full-length episode for you guys. Been a busy couple months for us both. But we're going to have a full-length episode. We're going to have our full schedule returning to normal very, very soon. So we appreciate you all sticking with us, whoever has. If you're new or old, Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You know the drill. Peace.